Okay, so just scrying the Aether of Kar. And so once again, I'm just being reminded of the sort of uh, lightning in a bottle effect. It's like the means of the realm of Adam Kadmon to manifest directly into the heart. Um, so the infinite is just sort of bypassing a lot of what we would consider the tree of life. And so I'm just following this, <clears throat> this light as it shines forth. And I'm seeing it sort of take a straight ahead and then bouncing over a direction. This I'm being told is uh, similar to magic as we think of it. But mainly, and so this would be like when we're pursuing something and we're not quite sure the nature of what it is that we're actually pursuing. So it seems like we're derailed, but really we're after something that we can't really see. Um, but we know that we need to follow this path to whatever it leads us to. So straight ahead turning into like a curve, which is a semicircle around some obstacles. So once again, I'm reminded that truly everything is actually in this straight line, it's just that everything else seems to rotate around it, but um, there is no change really per se. And what I'm noticing is that there's a bit of shifting of everything around. It's like, it's very disorienting. And this is almost where it's like the heart or the divine or both are saying, okay, we're going to blind you from this. We still need to go straight ahead but you're gonna freak out too much about this. So um, this again is just bringing up those themes of sight versus blindness, seeing versus obscuration, a helpful obscuration. But that doesn't mean that the heart itself is obscured, only the mind or the sense organs or what have you. And really the same practice should be the same regardless of softness of heart, you know, a real, gentleness or a real light touch of the mind, as it were. Because it's very easy to sort of get focused in on the logic of something instead of using the mind to behold and contemplate the heart necessarily. So this is where it's easy to get tripped up because some circumstances are bound to change, right? And we're going to need to adapt, but Ultimately, why are we adapting? And the reason why we're adapting is because of the nature of the heart. And why does the heart go where it goes? Because the divine is immediately sort of sending in its own signal, for lack of a better term. So I'm looking um, a little bit farther ahead. So this is wonderful in terms of knowing where to go. And in terms of knowing who one is, it's almost like you do need to slow down enough to stop and reflect, um, or at least feel like you're stopping for a brief moment, taking some time, maybe not doing, but that in, in and of itself really is another path. It's just, um, you're not aware that that has its own inertia or one isn't aware of that rather. And so I'm feeling stuff coming up off of the book of the uh, book of silvered leaves, the leaves of the that book, <laughs> as well as the book uh, Amzesna Gezes Harda. So both leaves are, are sending me energy. Um, I'm reflecting just a little bit on some of the pressure of of current circumstances and how. Hmm. It's a reminder to continue doing all of the things to stay healthy and really honor the entire process. <clears throat> this has been a somewhat more stressful time, but I'm reminded again, sort of the, the cliche of doing all of the things needed, but also respecting 
the fact that sometimes you just need to observe the mind and allow it to do its thing. And sometimes the mind is someone else's mind. And not getting caught up in their drama. So, so just looking at this for a little bit, and that's the sort of concentration I'm reminded that, you know, is needed to get through anything abyssal. And so, so yeah. So I'm just looking a little bit at, um, once again, reminded of this light, of um, the divine light that's in front of, that's, that's sort of being piped in directly into the heart. And I'm just looking, I'm, I'm watching it move. I'm watching it go throughout the chambers, so to speak, of the realm of my heart. And it's lighting everything up, but it's also giving it a subtle energy. It's like it's moving through these circuits that are dormant and trying to awaken them gently as you would slowly awaken a small child. And this is sort of working its way through my heart realm. And it's beautiful. And I'm just observing this light as it's going through. And it's becoming a wide variety of colors. And then these colors are sort of moving beyond just a simple direction, but really they're lighting up. Um, it's almost like in the Wizard of Oz when one needed to follow the yellow brick road starting in Munchkinland, where all of the characters had these different colors on them. So even though the road is like where to go and it's yellow and it has all of that, really the main purpose of that is to see is to begin with all of these different colors and then whichever direction you need to go, you can go that way, but that continues to be lit up in kind of a nice psychedelic pattern. So I'm just bid, uh, bid to relax, so I do. And I'm bid to relax more, so I do. And yeah, I'm just trying to accept, accept this calm being reminded of all the lessons and just, they're just suggesting a slight adjustment in favor of a little bit more structure just to, especially for, you know, the next couple weeks as I get up to and then cross Zach's again. Um, they're just saying a little bit more structure to keep everything soft. Um, things are going relatively well, but um, to not let uh, mundane difficulties um, overwhelm this work that you're doing because it is sacred work I'm being told so so I accept this I understand that it today was not uh, it was it was not stress-free so let's put it that way so to get around it they're telling me they're just reminding me and advising me what to do okay so I think that's it they're just having me relax a little bit more gonna work on my subtle body Yeah, and thus ends the vision.